Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. Now in this video I'm in the XR2 Raven Star and I'm in orbit around the moon. I am currently lined up to land at Brighton Beach. What I wanted to do in this video was to do a comparison between some different automatic landers that I'm aware of. So in recent videos, uh, well recent as of this recording, which is June 29th, 2021, I've been uh, showing a little bit about Pursuit MFD. And in one of those videos, I did an automatic landing at Brighton Beach using Pursuit MFD. But one thing I didn't take into consideration was how efficient is that? How much fuel is it using? Well, I recently became aware of another automatic base lander called Baseland Autopilot. So what I want to do in this video is to do a side-by-side -side comparison between those uh, between those MFDs. Also, uh, Baseland Autopilot has uh, three different ways that it can do the landing. It can use the it can you strictly use the hover engines just like Pursuit MFD, or it can use the main engines combined with the hover engines, or it can use the retro engines combined with the hover engines. So which method is going to be the most efficient and which, which MFD will come out on top? Let's find out. Let's go ahead and switch camera views here. Okay, so uh, this scenario picks up uh, just slightly before we've gone halfway around the moon. And normally I would do some kind of deorbit maneuver to bring down the other side of my orbit so that when I actually arrive at Brighton Beach, I wouldn't have so far to fall down. However, I'm not going to do that in this video because I want to just keep everything as comparable as I can. And I, I, what I might actually do is to uh, do a, a, a second version of this fly, uh, this comparison with, uh, with a periapsis over Brighton Beach of about 11 kilometers. But for the sake of this video, our periapsis is 34.25. I don't know exactly where in my orbit that's at, but we're, uh, and our apoapsis is 38. So we're going to use this exact same configuration for all of our tests. So if we're going to be doing a fuel comparison, we need to know how much fuel do we have to begin with. So let me bring up burn time calculator. And let me include the RCS because these autopilots will use uh, the, main in, the main fuel to fuel the hover engines, the retro engines, or the main engines. And they will use some RCS for linear translation and to rotate pitch yaw. So we're starting off with 8,668 meters per second. So I've started a little uh, spreadsheet just so we can keep track of things. And these are the four tests that we're going to do. We're going to use Baseland Autopilot in its uh, hover mode configuration. We're going to use it in its retro configuration, which uses the main engine. And we're going to use it in its prograde configuration, which uses the retro engines. And then we're going to use Pursuit MFD. In all four cases, we're going to have this exact same amount of starting delta V because I'm going to be using the same scenario. All right, let's switch back to this view. And let me bring up Baseland Autopilot and uh, perform our first test. So the way we navigate around this one is uh, currently this first line is highlighted and no target is boxed in. So I'm going to go over to the right because I want to choose a base. And now I'm going to go down to choose the next line. And this is where I choose my program. And the, the default is the hover program, and that's the one I'm going to use at the moment. But I select the different programs by going right left. But again, the hover program is the one I'm going to use first. Then I'm going to go down again, and Brighton Beach is already selected, so I don't have to do anything. And then I'm going to go down again, and currently the pad is the main base, and uh, we don't want to land actually on top of the base we want to land on a landing pad so in um, landing pad one's in red indicating that it's used so we'll use landing pad two so this will be the same configuration for all the tests that we do will be brighton beach landing pad two just to make sure everything is consistent so i'm going to say okay and i'm going to give the autopilot control of our yaw control of our pitch control of our roll and control of our engines and then i'm going to turn on the autopilot that's it, I'm done. So the only thing I'm going to do now is just warp time forward. The engine for this autopilot will kick in at 50% and it'll start rotating the vessel. So I wanna make sure I come back to real time before we get there because otherwise, uh, you know, it might, strange things might happen. And I know that's going to be around uh, 
can't remember exactly, but I'll probably come out of time warp around a thousand kilometers. So let me just go carefully. Don't want to overshoot. So, and then the other thing is, as you see this, as we get closer and closer, the engine uh, percentage ramps up faster and faster. So it's really easy to overshoot because you're looking at this and you're thinking, well, I've still got 35% to go, but you'll see it, it ramps up really fast. So I'm just going to stay at 10x for now, and then when we get to about 45%, I'll go back to real time. I just want to make sure I give the autopilot um, its best chance for maneuvering the vessel without the stress of time warp. So we're at 36, 37, you can see it ramps up faster and faster. So there's 45%. Now I'll just be patient, come back to real time, and let it have the last couple of seconds. And you'll see right at 50%, it's going to orient the vessel. And there we go. And we're about 200, and I think, I think it started that around 215 kilometers, something like that. Okay, so we've already used uh, 6 delta V, just orienting the vessel. But we're not really going to focus on this too much. I just want to know what the ending number is. So, since we do have a little ways to go, now that we're oriented, I'm going to go ahead and do a bit more time warp, but I'll do it carefully with a 5. And I think around 85 or 90 percent is when the burn starts. So again, I want to be back in real time before that starts. Okay, so yeah, just after 90 percent that started. All right, so, well, there isn't a whole lot we can look at. I do have some cool camera positions set up in the XR2, but unfortunately there I don't have one that's pointing down from the back of the vessel, and even if I did, no, it, it should work because we're using hover engines, so that actually might be a camera point that I want to use. But I'll show you, like if I just, uh, oh that's a good camera angle, we'll go with that one. And Brighton Beach is probably like right here, so... Not sure which way we're facing though. Let me see. Well, I can't see that way, so. But yeah, what I need is a camera position that. So right now the vessel is like this. It's pointing up, and the main engines would be facing down, but they're not doing anything right now. I need a camera position that's right at the back of the vessel, pointing straight down. But this is better than nothing. Now I have noticed when this autopilot transitions from this position to wings level, it's really sloppy. So that's one thing about this autopilot I don't care for. Um, I'm sure that could be worked out programmatically, um, or maybe there are even some settings in here that I haven't dabbled with yet that can make that transition a bit smoother. But you'll see what I you'll see what I mean here in just a moment. It's a pretty ugly transition. But this is our vessel. This is the base. So you can see we're almost over top of the base, and then all we have to do is just drop. Looks like we're just uh, just about over top of the base. And then once the vessel transitions over to wings level, this uh, our camera angles will be a bit better because we'll actually be able to see Brighton Beach below us. I really like these uh, camera attachments. It's a really good way to look at the outside world without having to you know cheat and do this like out of body experience where I'm like somehow floating around the you know the XR2 from the outside okay so now we're pretty much going to transition into free fall mode because we're just right over top of the base now and and yeah this this transition is not clean and that's one thing that I would like to see better Although I will say in the other, the two other modes, BLA Retro and BLA Pro, um, the the transition. Well, we don't really have to transition because we're we're wings level all the time, so that those are smoother. But here's what I'm talking about. See, it's a really sloppy. Yeah, that's a really sloppy maneuver, and I feel like it's burning tens of extra delta v that it doesn't need to burn just because it doesn't handle this very well 
because you can hear that those uh, those RCS thrusters are on this entire time because it's just fighting to get control and and if we were doing this manually you know we would just be able to rotate the vessel over smoothly and it, we, we wouldn't be fighting like it's just it's over controlling that's the phrase I'm looking for it's just way over controlling that transition and as a result it's using a lot more DV than it needs to but ultimately you know even if it's using more DV for this maneuver we'll see what happens overall so what I'm going to do in each of these tests when I get the call out that I need to put the landing gear down I'm gonna turn on the APU leave it on and put down the landing gear at that point. And I think we get that around 500 meters above the ground. And in some of these tests, it's gonna, you know, it's, we're gonna be falling pretty fast, but with the hover engines will kick in and slow us down. 5, so, so I think we can be patient and we can wait till we get the call out Four before thousand. we uh, turn on the APU. Three thousand. So we're really stable now. It's just that initial transition is horrendous. 2000 You are cleared to land. So we should be getting the warning here soon that we don't 9, have the landing 000. gear down. 800 700 600 500 400 3 Warning gear is up. Okay, there's the warning. Turn on the APU. One warning. And putting down the gear. 30 20 so it's cutting it pretty close, but it gets down and locked in time. <laughs> Just barely. Okay, wheel down, wheel stop, turn off the APU, and we will immediately check our DV. Okay, so again, with DV plus RCS, we have 6,532 meters per second remaining. So let's log that. Again, 6,532. So we ended this test with 6,532, and somehow this thing got deleted, so let me just do a quick, uh, we want B2 minus C2. I just want to copy that formula all the way down. Okay, so, so that one used 2,136 meters per second. All right, let me quickly uh, exit out of Orbiter and pray that you know what i don't trust this lander the way it yeah let me just exit really quick relaunch orbiter trust me it's uh it's pretty crash tastic otherwise so i'm gonna go back into that exact same scenario launch orbiter and now we're going to do the uh, bla retro the baseland autopilot retro which will use the main engine Okay, All systems so we've, we've seen our situation, so let's get through this quickly so that hopefully we can keep this video under 20 minutes. So we're just going to go into Baseland Autopilot. Just like before, we're going to go to the right, then we're going to go down, we're going to switch programs to Retro, yes. And we're going to go to Brighton Beach, and we're going to choose Landing Pad 2, just like before. And we're going to give this uh, uh, Autopilot control of the yaw, the pitch, the roll, and the engines. And we're going to bring up AP to engage the autopilot. Once again, nothing's going to happen until we get to about 50% on the engine, and that won't happen until we're uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of like a thousand kilometers out. Actually, for this autopilot, it'll probably be even closer because this one's going to use the main engines. But we'll keep a close watch on our time warp. We really want to be, we really want to be back at real time before this hits 50%. It's not going to be catastrophic or anything if we over if we miss it. It's just so I'm going to go back to real time. It's just you'll see when the autopilot kicks in. It I think it, I think what happens is it just does extra maneuvering because the time steps are so fast, and that's a waste of DV. And for a test like this, it's really important that we don't waste any DV. So let me track our position, and zoom way in, and you can see you know we're we're getting much closer to the base this time. And let's bring up our cool camera. And that's the ground view. Oops, let me switch camera view. Sorry about that. You didn't miss anything, though. It's the danger of switching camera views. 
Uh, the only thing you missed there was just the quick setup of the of the baseland autopilot, but you heard what I was saying, and I suppose if you look closely enough, you could see there what I was doing. The more important part is coming up now. So I think what is it, about 95%? Yeah, it looks like about 95%. That's when it kicks in. So this is more in line with what I would do, you know, if I were manually landing this thing, I would wait until I was as close to the base as possible and I would engage the full power of the main engines and then I would just drop as fast as possible and only engage the hover engines um, when they were needed. Now the only thing about these tests that are going to be somewhat inefficient is just the fact that again we're so high up above Brighton Beach so we're going to we're going to require extra hover because we're falling faster you know we're falling from an altitude of like 36 kilometers instead of falling from an altitude of 10 so to to increase our efficiency overall we could um, you know we could just make sure that by the time we were above Brighton Beach we were no higher than we need to be with that with taking into account the fact that we wouldn't want to hit anything on the way over to Brighton Beach and again uh, according to NASA highest peak on the moon is just under 11 kilometers and I looked up um, a PDF actually that showed where that was at and it's kind of equatorial if I'm not mistaken so there's the so so that's kind of bad in the sense that there's a good chance you would run into it with a normal equatorial orbit okay so we're right over top of the base and it's got us all lined up so now we're just gonna free fall And we probably could get away with a little bit of time warp on the free fall. Let me just go ahead and do that just to try to make sure I keep the video time down. Because nothing's going to happen until, until we're, you know, under like five kilometers or so. You can see we're dropping. See our camera view here. And we're falling faster and faster. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go back to real time now. That was a good good timing on that because now I can hear the thrusters doing a bit of uh, adjustments. And again, I'll wait till I get the call out for the landing gear. But 5, we we need to be on it right away when we get that call out. Four thousand. Which one do you think is going to win? 8, the retro engines or the main engines? Logically, I would think the main engines would win, but I noticed something that the retro engines are doing. Getting ready to turn on the APU. Okay, there's the warning. Putting down the gear. Gear down is locked. Seven, Gear down and locked. Five, three, two, one. Wheels down. Wheels stop. All right, wheels down. Wheels stop. Turn off the APU. Go over to burn time calculator, and we have six thousand five hundred and ninety remaining. Six thousand five hundred and ninety. So let's go to our spreadsheet and punch in our number. So that was. 6,590. So that used a bit less DV than the hover engines. So the next test will be for the retro. But again, I like to keep my videos under 20 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and end this part here. And when we come back in part two, we will carry out the last test for Baseland Autopilot and we will do Pursuit MFD as well. Which one do you think is going to win overall? Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next part.